Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Patreon, that website that will allow you to collect money from your fans so that you could live off from your art and just do creative content and do whatever you want, all your best dreams and wishes come true. This maybe sounds too good to be true and that's why I want to talk about is the Patreon thing right for you? It's not for everybody. It's not for, maybe not for most of the visual artists in the world, but can you profit from it? You know, can you grow on Patreon and communicate and deepens, widens your community and your fans? It's the question here. Today I would like to start a series of videos on how to Patreon as a visual artist. And today's video is going to be the basics of the basics. I would like to take a step back and look at Patreon in the historic backdrop and understand its business model, understand the time when it first emerged from the world so we could see what's its interest, what is the idea, and if it will align with your lifestyle, with your creative process, and see if it is the right thing for you to do as a visual artist. For those of you who doesn't know Patreon, it is a project founded in 2013 by popular online musician Jack Conte. I like to pronounce his name this way because I found it very musical. So Jack Conte decided that he wanted to have a way to get money from his fans because he had a lot of social influence on the internet, but he didn't have any other ways to get money from them. And he was left with very, very few hundred of dollars every month and he couldn't continue and he couldn't grow his creative projects. So he decided to um, bring in on board his college roommate, always a college roommate, and add a feature onto his website that collects money from his fans. And later this project became an independent project that became a trending thing on the internet that is later, as we know, Patreon. Uh, now there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people visiting Patreon. They are collecting money from their fans or they are pledging their dollars to their favorite creators. And it's like a trending thing in the creative community. Why is this Patreon thing so successful? I believe it because it has the three qualities from three separate independent trends. And if you mix those trends together, you get perfectly Patreon as a result. They are crowdfunding, sharing economy, and subscription business model. And you may say, wait a second, like subscription and sharing economy, what does it have something to do with Patreon? And that's why you need to listen to the video to the end. I would like to break it down and explain you a little bit. And I would like to take it like a business case study. Crowdfunding as Wikipedia described it very well. It's a practice of funding a project or venture by raising small amounts of money from a large number of people. In 2019, a project from New York launched called Kickstarter. It totally changed the way startup entrepreneurs found their new ventures and new projects. And it's such a revolutionary way. However, there is a problem. Like it's basically positive. It is okay, all positive, but there is a problem. Imagine like you ask money from your family, friends and fools and you say, okay, I will return the money in X amount of years with interest. Or you say you're on board as a stakeholder, as a shareholder, I give you shares. This is perfectly normal and it's all regulated. But with crowdfunding websites such as Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, a lot of websites like that, legally and practically speaking, they're not considered a way to fund your project like you know IPO, like it's not a way to get investors. When someone gives you that money, well, those crowdfunding platforms, they're making a donation. So in exchange, you can give well, you can give whatever or you don't have to give like something in return, digitally, physically, whatever that could be you choose. But the problem is they're not giving you as an investment, not because they believe that your business will take off. No, they believe that it's going to be a good thing and cool thing to do. Why not? So give you money. Typically, they will give you only a very, very small amount of money, like the ones that you would donate to the street beggars, to the street performers. It's not going to be a lot of money because of the nature of the donation, well, Kickstarter, well, the crowdfunding platforms such as Patreon. Typically, people pledge $1, $3, $5, $10, or like $20, like the max. Usually, it's not a lot of money. As an independent 
creative entrepreneur, you might need $50,000 to start your project. This is quite typical in the startup world. Imagine you want to invent the blackest black that is blacker than the vendor black. You need labs, you need uh, communication, you need you know the team, a lot of equipment, you need money to make it happen. And $50,000 typically we rise from angel investors, seed funds, or we borrow it from the bank taking $50,000 loan, which is quite typical as a business entrepreneur. But when you get it from Patreon, from Kickstarter, you're getting it from 50,000 people, $1 each, not $50,000 from one person or one institution to get the 50,000 people who say, okay, I'll give you $1. So you need to have a huge crowd, a huge like crowd funding, right? So you need to have the crowd to get the funding. If your art is only appealing to a small amount of people, maybe they're very intellectual, maybe they're very hard to understand, that requires a lot of intelligence. That means you need to find that many people for a small amount of them will say, yes, I'll give you $5 every month. If you can't reach 50,000 people, it's unlikely you'll get enough sufficient fund to live from full time from Patreon. So if your art is not appealing to a large number of people, it's gonna be very hard for you to take advantage of crowdfunding. As, as the name suggests, crowd and funding. Second of all, I wanna talk about sharing economy and the risks of sharing economy. In the same year as Kickstarter, but on another side of the US in San Francisco, another project was founded and later as we know as the largest hotel chain in the world without even a hotel room, that is Airbnb. Airbnb has brought sharing economy onto the table, into the limelight and really pushed the idea forward. Imagine how crazy it is for you to sleep in a total stranger's home or let a total stranger sleep in your home. Of course, it's exciting, it's you know, gonna be super cool, you're gonna meet a lot of new people, but there are also risks associated with such a sharing economy like Uber, like Airbnb. People call it the next industrial revolution, just like the previous industrial revolution, People used to work days and nights without insurance, without pensions, without appropriate protections. And that's why sharing economy arises a lot of issues with protections. When there is an issue between you and your fans, the platform is not gonna be much of a help. Imagine you are sharing your extra capacity, you're sharing the tools that you're not fully utilizing with your fans. Like you create as a digital artist customized brushes or you create templates or you create certain kind of easy manipulating base for your fans to enjoy, to play with. They can resell it to someone else. They can abuse it and you know do it in a certain way that you don't like or that you did not allow. And then they make money from it. They make profit. They do it in a way that is damaging your reputation and you want to stop it. But the fact that the files already left your computer, they're already like gone. And it's very, very hard for you to control, to really see how it's being used. And such online platforms like Patreon, like any other sharing economy platforms, they're not much of a liability. They are gonna say, hey, you know, I connect you and your fans, the rest is between you two. With time, more and more issues will arise from sharing economy websites such as Airbnb, you know, Uber, and Patreon. Last but not the least, this is a typical subscription business model. Subscription business models existed like long time ago in the 17th century. You have the periodicals, periodics, I don't know how to call it, like newspapers and magazines that people subscribe to paying a monthly quota. And this idea is not new. But Netflix has stepped in and changed the way we entertain ourselves, changed the way we pay for movies, we're not renting DVDs anymore, we're paying monthly subscription to see all what there is to see on Netflix. And Netflix has totally innovated the way we entertain ourselves and use subscription. After Netflix, people online are more and more willing to pay for subscriptions. And this is a very positive thing. However, subscription model means that you have to retain your customers every single month because they can leave you anytime they want. So you have to be constantly at your best outperforming and just trying to retain your customers and guess what? 
Customer retention today in the digital era is damn hard. It is so difficult because people can discover younger and better artists than you easier and faster you can easily lose your fans to the new artists and people change of course this is uh, like a kind of a life if as an artist you would like to preserve your creative freedom and you would like to say i'm going off grade for three months and on a trip you can't update you can't entertain your fans during that time and you will lose your fans if you don't receive enough money from your fans on Patreon, maybe you don't have any other source of funding and you have to go back to a full-time job, a part-time job and become again a part-time artist and you can't live fully from making art. Of course, Patreon is still a great solution for a lot of artists but it's not for everyone. Again, to sum up, if you are an artist who does not have a lot of social presence, your art does not appeal to a huge amount of people, then it's maybe not the right choice for you to live full time on Patreon because you need crowd to get funding, right? The second thing is that if you can't pass the mental, um, like the burden, you can't carry the load of thinking that you're sharing a huge private chunk of your life with your close fans, like sharing a room as an Airbnb room in your property, right? Not everyone can accept that. If you say, you know, I'm not willing to share anything private, then what's the point of having Patreon and sharing this with a closer circle of your fans? Then it's not the right match for you. And last but not the least, if you enjoy the total freedom of being wherever you want, whenever you want, and living traveling, living off grid, and not going to check your email for three months, then again, Patreon is not right for you because it requires you to deliver and perform every month, to be social, to be there for your fans on a monthly basis at least. So if you're not willing to do that, Patreon is not right for you. After listening to this video, what do you think? Is Patreon the right choice for you? What is your experience with Patreon? I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment below. Also perhaps leave your Patreon and I would like to see what you're doing and how you're doing. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next video.